What's going on everybody, it's Dilbert and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all the different requirements that are going to be needed to be able to compile the Unreal Gaming Engine 5, which we're going to be using to be able to put in the plugins that we're getting from the Magic Leap team. And these plugins are going to allow us to build experiences that are going to work with the camera, that are also going to work with the Magic Leap 2 controllers. You can also use this video to be able to compile Unreal 5 from source without having to have the Magic Leap requirements. So this is gonna work for people with Magic Leap devices and people that just want to get an Unreal project basically compiled from source. So let's go ahead and jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to get access to the repo for Unreal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in and get access, then go into a personal in your account profile. Then what you gotta do is if you go under the apps and accounts, we're gonna be able to link to GitHub and just go ahead and link it. This happened to be the account that I use for GitHub. And then you can just hit authorize to allow and, and get access basically from, from Unreal. And then you should be getting an email. Once you get the email, you can hit join and then join is going to allow you to basically see the repos for Epic Games. The next thing is if you are using Magic Leap 2, then you have to download the ML2 developer tools, which in this case is going to be the ML Hub. Just go ahead and hit finish here to install it. And then now what you need to do is go into open and we're going to be installing the Unreal 3D creation bundle and also that native 3D creation bundle. And this is gonna give you basically all the plugins that we're gonna to need to be able to use this in Unreal. Then once it installs, then you should be able to be good to go with that. And what we need to do is we need to add a, an environment variable now. And this is gonna be the location where the actual plugin is for Magic Leap. So go into environment variables, create a new one. And this one is going to be called ML SDK for Magic Leap SDK. And then just put the path and you can see now that we have it, just hit okay, hit okay. Now this part, it's for those of you who are going to be building with Magic Leap. So you're gonna need the Android components. So in this case, it's gonna be the JDK 11. And this is what's going to allow you to build to the Magic Leap from Unreal. We're also going to be creating a new environment variable for the JDK 11. So just go ahead and create a new one. This one is going to be basically your Java home and then just paste, paste the path and hit okay, and then we should be good to go with that. Now, there's also other components that we're gonna need, so just make sure that you go into developer.android.com, and then we're going to be installing the Android Studio Electric EL, because it's gonna allow us to access the SDK Manager and then additional components such as CMake that we're going to have to install. Just click on this version here and then just download it. It's gonna be the one for Windows. If you're running on a Mac, either Silicon or Intel, then you can download those versions. Then just go ahead and install it. You see next, next, and then it should install here pretty quickly and open up. Just do the standard installation. I like dark mode, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And here we just need to accept a couple of different agreements and licenses. And let's just go ahead and do finish. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go here. Now we need to start looking into Unreal Code. So just go ahead and clone it. I'm going to be using the Magic Leap fork, but in your case, if you wanna use this for non-Magic Leap, basically a game or something else, then you can just clone the official repo. For those of you who are going to be using Magic Leap, then make sure that you copy the plugin for Unreal that we downloaded from the hub into the plugins runtime folder that you see on the left side. Then we're gonna go into Visual Studio, make sure that you have these components that net desktop development, universal Windows platform development, also desktop development with C++, and lastly, the game development tools with C++. Now make sure that you go into the folder where you clone the actual code, and then there's gonna be a setup that back that you need to run. It's gonna be pulling all the different dependencies that the Unreal application is gonna need. Once that's good to go, then we're also going to be looking at generating project files. This is what's going to be generating the UE solution for Visual Studio. You can see here the ones that, it, that is highlighted. I did dash 2022 because I want the project, the solution to be created with Visual Studio 2022. If you don't do it, it's going to be doing 2019 
by default, you can see here that it took that parameter correctly. Then go ahead and open up the solution and that's going to open Visual Studio 2022, which is what I wanted. Go into build, build solution, and then we should be good to go with building. Okay, so now go into your engine and then binaries and you're going to find the actual binaries for Windows 64. And then there's an Unreal that .exe that we can run. Go into games and then let's create a new project. It's going to be a blank project with target platform mobile. Quality preset, it's going to be the scalable and then static counting and ray tracing. Just go ahead and leave those unchecked. And then we can just do Magic Leap 2 with Unreal. It's going to be the name of the project. Just click on Create. Now what we need to do is we're going to be going into and creating a new level. So it's going to be an empty level. So just click on that and then click on Create. And then let's go ahead and hit Control S to basically save the map. And you can name these anything that you like. I did ML2 level just to make sure that it was going to be standard with what I'm doing. Then go into lights and drag and drop a skylight. You can drag it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Once you do that, we're gonna be changing this to be SLS specify QMAP, and then we can just do the daylight ambient QMAP. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the mannequins that the Unreal Fight team provides. And this look really cool. I didn't wanna just do a cube. So I'm just gonna do these ones and I'm gonna show you how we can apply different animations and rotations to them. So once it downloads, you're going to see that it shows up on the control rig, character, mannequins, and then animations. Okay, so once it's good to go, let's go ahead and close it and right click on content. And we're going to go into add and import content, blueprint class, and then we're going to be doing an actor. This one is going to be called XR actor. Let's go ahead and drag and drop it into the scene view. And we're going to be changing here the location to 80. And then that's going to be on the X axis. And then let's go ahead and add a new component, which is going to be a rotating movement. This one is going to be 75. That's how frequently or how fast we're going to be moving. And then also add a player star to the scene. And then we're going to be also changing that to be a 0, 0, 0. Basically, we're going to have the player star at the pivot point. And then we're going to have the character, the actor, right in front of it. You can see here that we're dragging and dropping that character. Just go ahead and zero everything now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop that character into the actor. And now we can zero everything out just to make sure that we can add some rotation so that things look better. It's basically going to be facing that camera. And then if you look at it, it looks like everything is positioned correctly. We can also change here the anim class or it's actually not the anim class. It's going to be the skeletal mesh asset. Just make sure that it has the actual character money. That way it has the right character. I don't know. I think this was a bug that the asset currently has. But it looks like this is good to go. So now go ahead and go into content. We're going to be adding another component. It's going to be a blueprint class. And this one's going to be basically our pawn. So just do XR pawn. So now double click on it to open it up. And here we're going to be adding the camera and also the capsule collision. So let's go ahead and add the camera here. And the default settings for the camera are completely fine. And then if you go to the camera, select it, there's going to be a collision capsule right in front of it right at the pivot point. Let's go ahead and offset it a little bit, negative 60 on the Z-axis. And then we're also going to have the capsule have height to be 85. And the radius is fine as it is. So now let's go ahead and right click in here in the content, blueprint class, and we're going to be creating a new game mode. And once we get it created, we can basically assign what the pawn that we created it's going to be. And you can go into the default pawn class to basically select what the XR pawn is going to be. So it looks like that's good to go, compile, and then just go ahead and hit save. And we should be good to go. So now go into plugins, and this is where we're going to be adding the Magic Leap plugins. So if you search for ML or Magic, it's going to, it's basically going to show you all the different plugins. We're going to be installing the Magic Leap OpenXR plugin, and just click on restart to restart. And basically it's going to enable that plugin for us. Okay, so it looks like this is good to go. So now let's go back into project settings. And in project settings, go ahead and search for a start in VR. We need to enable that because we're going to be using kind of a mixed reality experience. So the next thing that we need to do, though, if we go under maps and modes, we need to basically enable and designate the default game mode and also the startup map, basically what's going to be the initial level. Once we select those, let's go ahead and go into Android and set something up for Android. We're going to be configuring. So just basically select that. And then there's a package game data inside APK. We need to enable that as well. And then make sure that you enable x86-64 here and ARM64 is disabled, OpenGL is disabled, and Volcam is going to be enabled. 
And then we also need to disable basically the splash screen. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and then disable show launch image. And it looks like that it's good to go. So just go ahead and close everything. Now we can go into platforms and then do Android and select DXT for Android. And then we can go ahead and package the project. And now we can select the location where we're going to be building this Android. So just go ahead and select your location and hit select folder. All right, so here's the results of running this. Basically we have a rotating component. The camera is currently working correctly and I can see the character in the air. Everything looks good. It actually looks really, really cool to be honest. And this is a big success to having a native Unreal application running on the Magic Leap 2. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, let's go ahead and go back into project settings. And there's a couple of things that we need to do here for controllers. So go into input and we're gonna be adding two different action maps. This is so that we can capture the trigger button on the controller and also the shoulder button on the controller. Let's go ahead and call this one trigger. And then this one is going to be ML action underscore shoulder. And then now what we need to do is we need to select what the mapping is gonna be, but we haven't enabled the plugin just yet. So we need to go back into plugins and then make sure that we go back into augmented reality. And here's where we can search for Magic Leap. And you're gonna see that we don't have the Magic Leap controller enabled just yet. So just go ahead and click on restart and then go back into input and we should be able to basically select what the inputs are gonna be mapped to. This one's gonna be the Magic Leap R trigger and the other one is gonna be Magic Leap R shoulder. So we should be good with mappings. Go ahead and close it. Go back into the XR pawn and then we're going to be adding basically a Magic Leap controller component node. Go ahead and associate it with the event begin play so that it happens when the game starts. Then what we're gonna do though is I want to get all the different components, all the actors. In our case, it's gonna be just one for now, but I'm gonna be adding more. And just go ahead and connect the Magic Leap node to the get all actors. This one is going to be trying to get all the different XR actors in the scene. So that's going to give us that. It's gonna give us an array, but we need to store that in a variable. So let's go ahead and add a new variable. This one is going to be called XR actors. And it's not gonna be Boolean. We need to make it actually an XR actor type, which is our custom type. And then we're gonna make it an array as well. So now that we have that variable though, we could use that to save it into memory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a set and drag and drop the, basically add the connection to the out actors, to exact XR actors on the set. So we should be good. Let's go ahead and remove all the other components. What we gotta do now is I'm gonna go ahead and map the different actions in here, the ones that we've added on their project settings and also do one for the shoulder. So, so far so good. I know that I'm moving fast, but there's a lot that I wanna show you today. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's create a new Boolean. It's gonna be called ML Trigger Press. It's gonna go ahead and make it a Boolean. Make sure that it's not an array. It's going to be a single value. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it and it's gonna be a set. So if somebody press it, I'm basically gonna call this node and then I'm gonna set it to true on the first node. And then on, on the next node, I'm gonna set it to false. So that's basically what this is doing. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a for each because I want to loop through each one of the actors. And that way we can basically assign a rotation based on the actor that we find. So I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna also get, do a getter on the XR actors. And now what I need to do though, is I need to get all the different rotation components. So first let's go ahead and add a branch and I'm gonna go ahead and map that to the loop body. I'm also going to add another, another node in here, which is gonna be a get so that I know the state of the trigger. Once we do that, we do need to get all the different components by class. So this is what we're gonna be using to get all the different rotating components. So it's gonna go ahead and map that to the array element. And then this one is going to be rotating movement component. So this is gonna give us all the different components that have basically that component. And that way we can set the rotation rate. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have two nodes. One is gonna have the rotation rate set to a value and that value it's going to be in this case 90 the other one is going to be set to zero so if we press it first it's going to be set to zero we're going to stop if we release the trigger button it's going to be basically set back to 90. on the action shoulder though all i'm going to do is i'm going to print just two different print statements one whether i'm pressing and the other one whether i am releasing so this one is going to be the one for press and if we go ahead and add another node which is going to be print string this one we're just gonna say action shoulder release. So we can just go ahead and copy and paste and then just change this to release. Okay, so it looks like this looks good. Let's see, it's running by default and you can see when I press it, it stops. When I let go, it releases and you can also see 
that we're getting the print statements on the top left. So looks like this is working great. So the next thing that I did is I cloned the character multiple times. So now we have six. I also added a new for each loop and I'm casting to a skeletal mesh component so that I can basically play an animation. So if I'm pressing on the trigger, I play one animation. If I let go, I play a different animation. You can see here that I'm pressing the trigger and it runs as soon as I let go it changes the animation so just something different to play with and to be honest this looked really really good and i was really surprised about the quality and also performance of running this natively on the ml2 we took a little time in learning how to get the source code for unreal 5 compile i also show you how to get some of the components dependencies, different commands that we run through the terminal. And for those of you who want to do development with Magic Leap and Unreal, I also show you how to do that. Or if you want to get started with Unity, make sure that you watch the video right above it where I walk you through that entire process. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and also be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe because it's gonna allow me to bring you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.